In this video, we will encounter a second type of differential equations, linear differential equations. We can solve this type of differential equations using a so-called integrating factor. In this video, we will learn what a linear differential equation is and what an integrating factor is and how you can use it to solve such a differential equation. So let us take a look. So a linear differential equation uh, is a differential equation of the form y prime plus some arbitrary function of x, p of x, maybe anything times y equals some arbitrary function q of x. Or you can rewrite it in this form. So what's linear in the linear differential equation? Well, the linear is that the y and the y prime are linear over here. X may be anything, p of x and q of x may be any functions, but y and y prime have to be linear in the equation. So let's take a look at some examples. First example, y prime equals y times cosine x plus e to the power x squared. So in this case we would have p of x equals cosine x and q of x equals e to the power x squared. Well, p and q are horrible, but that's okay. The y and the y prime are linear in the equation, so there we are. We, that's fine. This one is linear. The second one looks much easier. We are divided x equals x cubed by times the y squared. Well, the x cubed is okay, but the y squared is not. The y is not linear in this equation. We have a y squared, so the second equation is not linear. Third one, divided x equals x cubed. Is this one linear? It doesn't look so, because we are missing the p. But wait a minute, p of x can be anything, including the zero function. So here we have a linear differential equation with p of x equals zero and q equals x cubed. So this one is linear and separable as well, by the way. And the last one, divided x equals x squared plus y squared. Here we have again a y squared, so this one is not linear. And by the way, it's not separable either. So the uh, first and the third are linear. The uh, second and, uh, is also sep uh, is separable, the third is also separable, and the fourth is neither linear nor separable. So how can you solve those differential equations? Well, we first look at the idea, what's the general idea. For that we look at three. If we have no p of x, so in that case we have divided x equals x cubed, and we can integrate on the left and on the right with respect to x. So we get the integral of y prime with respect to x equals integral x cubed dx, so we get y equals x to the power 4 over 4 plus c. So if we don't have a p, we can just integrate left and right. But what if we have p? Then we have to apply a trick in order to get sort of rid of this term p of x times y. Because we don't want that term. Without this term p of x times y, we are fine, we can just integrate. So what do we do? We multiply by the so-called integrating factor i of x. So we can do that, of course. And at first, it looks much worse. So we have i times y prime plus i times p times y equals i times q. And now we want to choose this i of x such that, on this left-hand side over here, so i y prime plus i times p times y as the derivative of i times y. So we want to choose a very particular i, such that this left-hand side can be written as a single derivative. This is a sort of inverse product rule. So how do we have to choose our i then? Well, let's see what happens if we expand here this right-hand side. The ddx of i of x times y, if we use a product rule there, so we get a di there dx times y plus i times dy dx, and we want it to be equal to this expression over here. So that has to be equal to i times y prime plus i times p times y. And we see that we are already quite far because we have a term in common. Those terms cancel out. So we want to choose our i such that i prime times y has to be equal to i times pi times y, uh, so the y cancels out, so uh, i prime has to be equal to i times p. So we have this equation over here, and we have to solve now for i of x. 
but we know how to solve this equation as a separable equation, so we can solve it. So what do we do? We separate, we put the i's on the left hand side and the x's on the right hand side. So we get a di over i equals px dx. So then we are over there. And note notice you know your p of x, it's coming from your original equation, so you know your p of x. Then we uh, put integral signs and we integrate, so we get the uh, ln of i on the left hand side and some integral px dx on the right hand side. We want to know i, uh, so we uh, solve for i by taking exponentials, so we get i of x equals e to the power integral px dx. So this i of x looks kind of horrible, but you can compute it because you have p, you can integrate and you can put it in an exponential. So we call this i of x our integrating factor. So why does this integrating factor work at all? So we choose our, choose our integrating factor such that this left hand side here, this left hand side here, becomes a single derivative of uh, i times x times uh, y. So the left hand side over here becomes a single derivative d dx of i of x times y equals right hand side i times q. And now you are in a problem of this type. Now we can just integrate left and right hand side with respect to x. If you integrate with respect to x on the left hand side, you get i of x times y. And on the right hand side, we have only x's now. So you can just integrate right hand side with respect to x. And in the final step, you just have to divide by i. And there you have your y. So that's the idea of the integrating factor. It looks cumbersome, but if your problem is nice enough, it works really, really well, as we'll see in some examples in the next web lectures.